Hello everybody, it's Mike Patterson from White Turtle Adventures here in Southern Alberta, Canada. Welcome back to my van. Well, even though today is 30 degrees Celsius, we are under a special weather statement and the weather is actually supposed to turn to go below zero this weekend with the possibility of snow to the west and to the north of us. With this happening and seeing some of the posts online, I thought I would address something that really annoys me, and that is the safety of heating your van or your uh, RV or your bus or your tiny home. Um, there, there's several ways to heat it. Uh, the first and most common way, if it is done as a commercial conversion, will be a forced air propane furnace. If you're doing a van, generally the ways that people do vans and buses is they use a either an SPAR heater or a basso heater that takes from the either diesel or gas. I have one that takes from the gas uh, as my van is gas and not diesel. The other ways that you can heat it is you can use electric heat if you have plugins. You can use a wood fired stove or you can use a catalytic heater. Now. I'm going to go through all of these one after the other and give you the good, the bad, and the ugly about all of them. First of all, a forced air furnace that you would get in a commercial RV. These are as safe as what a house furnace is. There is nothing wrong with using them. You can leave them run 24 hours a day and it'll heat your vehicle or your camper up perfectly. They are safe to use, they are designed to be used in the winter, and they will work. Now, if your vehicle is not a four-season vehicle, you may find that they're not done up correctly. In one of my vehicles, they did not have any vents in the floor, so all the heat came out right in one spot, and the back of the vehicle and the very front of the vehicle stayed quite cold. So. That was not the best. In good design ones, they actually have heat vents that go in different areas of the vehicle and they have cold air return to take the cold air in. So there are very good furnaces out there that are run off of propane. The next type of furnace that's out there is what is most people are using is the Wabasos or the S-Bars where they take either diesel or gas. Now, Again, these are designed to be run in the winter and they are perfectly safe to run in the winter. Now, there's nothing wrong with them. They will do the exact same thing as what a forced air furnace will do. They take in cold air, they heat it, and they expel the warm air. Now, taking both of those furnaces together or those heating systems together, I want to address something that really annoys me. And that is people that say, first of all, they're not safe. Second of all, they call them a wet heat. And I wanna address both of those things right now. First of all, for being safe, they are as safe as a house furnace. They are designed to run, they are designed to be safe. From all the accounts I've read, the only time when there's been issues with any of these devices in starting a fire or with carbon monoxide poisoning is if they have been modified incorrectly or installed incorrectly. But that's the same as a house furnace. I have a forced air furnace in my house. It burns natural gas. It, the gas comes in, it burns it, the exhaust goes out. With an RV furnace, which is a forced air furnace, and it uses propane, it's the exact same system. With the gas or the diesel heaters, it's the exact same system. It takes a fuel, it burns it, it exhausts the exhaust outside. They are safe to use. They do not, and under any circumstance when operating correctly, they do not exhaust the fumes inside. So they are safe to use. The second point, I hear this so many times and it annoys me to no end. People will say if you heat your vehicle with propane, it's a wet heat because propane contains moisture. Yes, propane contains moisture. The thing they don't understand is as follows. Propane, when burnt and exhausted outside, does not leave moisture in the vehicle. So if I have a propane furnace in my vehicle, I can turn it on. Yes, it's burning something with water in it, but that is exhausted to the outside. 
the heat that is created by that heats up a heat exchanger where the air goes through the heat exchanger to get warm. Those, the exhaust and the air from the RV never mix. So you do not add moisture to your vehicle. Likewise with the diesel, likewise with the gas. Now, some people say, well, with the diesel, you're going to get a lot of diesel smell inside. No, you don't. That is again exhausted outside. With the gas, the same thing. You do not smell the gas in the vehicle when it is going. If you do, you have a big issue. Now, a bunny trail. If you're heating your vehicle with anything, you should have a carbon monoxide detector and you should have a smoke detector slash fire detector, whichever one in there you want or both. The carbon monoxide detector, if you're combusting anything inside the vehicle for cooking or for heating or for heating your water, you should have a carbon monoxide detector because if there is a failure in one of those parts, you want to know about it. And the only way to know about it other than being dead or very sick is if your detector goes off. The second one I mentioned is either a smoke detector and or a fire detector. They are two different devices. I use a smoke detector because I figure if there's going to be anything burning in here, there's going to create enough smoke and I don't need it just to sense the fire. I think the smoke is good enough. Now, from those devices, I strongly recommend that you have them powered by battery. You can have them a 12 volt, but also have battery backup. Why? Because a lot of times when there's a fire, the electrical system is one of the causes or one of the things that's affected first. And if your electrical system gets torched, you don't have power going to your detectors. So I strongly recommend either having it just battery operated, in which case you have to make sure the battery is always fully charged or have it with a 12 volt with a battery backup in case it loses power. I recommend that for anything. Even if you don't have a heating source, a carbon monoxide detector will help if you're driving down the highway and there's somehow exhaust getting in your vehicle. I would strongly recommend both of those. You can get the combined units. They're about $70 Canadian, probably cheaper in the US and other places, but they are well worth having. Get one, have it in your vehicle. Now, when if you hear anybody say that propane heating or gas heating or diesel heating is adding moisture to your van, you now know it does not happen. If it is adding moisture to the van, there is a problem with the exhaust system. If you're getting smells in your van, you have a problem with your exhaust system. Either check it yourself or have somebody check it because you have an issue. Now, another way that people like heating their vehicles is with the small, tiny wood stoves. I think they are really cool, and it really annoys me that I never found a Canadian supplier until after I built my van, and I have nowhere for one. Because the benefit of those is, is that you can put them in your vehicle, and they don't take any electricity to heat your vehicle. The problem with them is the same as with the propane or with the gas or with the diesel is that the exhaust is supposed to go up and out. If there is a problem with the exhaust, you want to have a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide detector in case that something should go wrong. But otherwise, the way they operate is you put wood inside of it. You start the wood on fire. That heat heats the shell of the stove. That stove then heats the uh, unit that it's in. You can put a small fan on it so it blows the air around a bit more and away you go. Perfectly safe if done correctly. The next way that I actually heat my van and if I have the ability to do it and that is I have a 12 volt heater. I'm sorry, 120 volt heater that plugs into the shore power and that will heat my vehicle if I want it to. It works great. It's amazing. It's fantastic. I really like it when I have shore power, but I can only use it when I'm plugged in. It is a quiet heat source. It makes very little noise and I'm not burning any fuel or anything like that. I'm just using electricity. So it's a little bit cheaper, especially if you have free electricity. Now, the final way that people heat their vehicles, the final common way, because there are 
a whole pile of other ways, but I'm not going to get into that, is with a catalytic heater. Now, this is where a lot of the stories come from about people dying, about fire starting, or about propane adding moisture to the vehicle. Catalytic heaters seem to have a lot of people that hate them. But if used properly, they are perfectly safe. The first thing if you're using a catalytic heater, if it's an unvented catalytic heater, you need to have windows open to provide air for it to combust and to let fresh air come in. It is imperative. In cool weather, they work fine. In extremely cold weather, the issue I have with them is, is that you're letting in extreme cold air into your vehicle for it to warm up. And sometimes it can feel like a teeter-totter and that it gets warm and then cold comes in and it gets cold and it gets warm and so on and so forth. But they do work. I have one. I love it. It puts out a ton of heat. The great thing about it is it uses zero electricity. So I can run it wherever and whenever I want and I don't have to worry about power. Now, the problem with them is, and this is where the stories come from about a wet heat, is because it burns propane in an enclosed space. When it burns propane, the flame, the heat, releases the propane's moisture into the unit. Yes, it will build up moisture in the vehicle. Yes, it will get damp. If your window's open, it'll help to dry it out, but it does add moisture. Now, how much does it add? If you're running it overnight, you probably have added maybe half a cup of moisture to your unit. Maybe. You've probably expelled more moisture from breathing than it has from burning propane. So you're not going to see the water running off your walls overnight. If you do it night after night and you never let fresh air in, which was not a good idea to begin with, then you would probably see the moisture building up. The nice thing about a van is, especially the way I use my van, if I do use a catalytic heater in here to warm it up for some reason, then as soon as I start the van and fresh air is blowing in, heated fresh air, it dries out the van. But they will add moisture. A catalytic heater that is not vented will add moisture. Now, I keep saying vented and not vented. Vented catalytic heaters operate in the same principle in the same way as a forced air furnace or as the diesel or gas heaters in a van. They take the fuel, they burn it, and they exhaust the exhaust outside. So the moisture from a vented catalytic heater is exhausted outside, and so are the fumes, the carbon monoxide, and any smells. Those, in my opinion, are the best ones. Now, why did I choose what I chose over the other ones? The reason I chose my heating system is is because my heating system pulls from my fuel tank. So I only have to worry about carrying on board one fuel for my vehicle to drive and to heat it. To cook, I have propane, but I have a small bottle of propane. I didn't want big tanks of propane so that I could heat my vehicle because that was just not something I wanted. So is it safe to heat your van if done correctly? Yes. If you do and use the stuff that is designed for RVs, it is perfectly safe. I would strongly recommend, if you are not comfortable doing it, that you find a professional to install these devices. It is your life that you are putting on the line. And it's scary enough when I see people online that are doing their own electrical system and they don't understand what plus and minus means on a battery. And then you hear them going, I'm installing my heater this weekend. That scares me very much. So if you don't know what you're doing, if you're not 100% confident, if you don't know what the vent is, if you don't know what combustion air is, all of this stuff, 
then you need to find somebody to do it for you. Likewise, just putting it in the vehicle and putting your heat vent in the right space and your cold air vent in the right space. Find somebody that knows what they're doing. It will be a lifesaver in more ways than one. Now, are there other ways to heat your vehicle? I've heard so many different ways to heat your vehicle. Some are downright dangerous. People say, I use my cook stove to heat the vehicle. Don't do it. Just not worth it. I've heard people put in-floor heating in your vehicle. Well, unless you're plugging in at night to a power source uh, that's outside of your vehicle, to me, it would not be worth it because it takes too much heat. I've heard other people say that they have baseboard heaters in their vehicles. Again, if you don't power up, if you don't plug in, you're going to be using a lot of power to heat those, using those things to heat it. So I would not use it. Honestly, for the price of a good RV heater, for the life that it should last, for the time it should last, it's actually a very small investment if you're in a cold climate. For me, when it's 25 below and I'm in the van and I can just hit the thermostat and turn it up to the temperature I want and ignore it, it is a great thing. It's just like being at home. I, heat comes on, it warms it up, the heat shuts off, it cools off a bit, the heat goes, it comes back on again, just like at home. And it's as comfortable as being at home. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. Get a good furnace or a heat source for this winter and let's get out and enjoy our winter. Talk to you soon.